Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, my goodness me, follow that. Thank you, Scott. That was absolutely wonderful to listen to. But anyway, we do our best. We're going to talk about Manus. And Frank and I are very happy to have the chance to do that. Uh, we're going to talk about what's going on in Maynooth, some of the things we're doing, and our communities in Maynooth. That's really going to be our focus as well, I suppose. So, um, well, when I started to talk about communities and, you know, Maynooth and all that, I thought I'd have to put up a collection of nuns, a community of nuns, even though we don't actually have very many nuns in Maynooth anymore. But what we do have is pretty much... Um, the usual collection of groups you'll have in a university library. Is this mic okay? Is it? Okay, this is a very strong ring. Okay. So what we have in Ruth anyway are your usual collection of university groupings and uh, they will be very much the core of our communities, that you get the list that you can see there. And I think in Maynooth maybe we're um, probably fairly lucky in that we've traditionally a very strong sense of community. We've got good, easy connections and we're very, very aware of that. And sometimes actually we know that people choose to come to Maynooth because of that small sense of, got good sense of community in a small group. So we're the smallest of the Irish universities and maybe we gain from that. But what we've also conscious of, you can never take that for granted you always have to foster it and I suppose um, we're lucky in that well I'm lucky in that the work I would do as a subject librarian is very much part of that you get out there and be available and foster the communities and the groups so I'll start by having a look at Maynooth itself and if you look at a uh, it's a bit like a Scots red line. The big white down at the middle is a main road, a road west coming out of Maynooth town, and it goes right across the campus. So our Maynooth campus is divided into two, two pieces, I won't say halves. One is the north campus on the right here, and one is uh, the south campus. And um, of course, there, yeah. So here's the, here's the library here. So we're just on the edge of the South Campus. Now the North Campus is our big bustling area. It's full of students, lots of buildings, more and more buildings going up, <coughs> lots of teaching, lots of offices. The South Campus where we are is the older part of Maynooth, the, the seminary, the beautiful old buildings, gorgeous grounds, a little bit of teaching and some offices. And here we are on that side on the South Campus. Now, there's a few things about that. The first thing is we're a standalone library. And listening to Joanna yesterday talking about the College of Surgeons and the idea that it would be part of a building with other people in there, it's a very different experience. So we're in this big standalone library and we have to be thinking about being part of everybody else that's out there. So we have some good things going for us. And we may be on one side of the, we have to be on one side or the other. We're on the quieter side, but we're on the very, very edge. And what we also, in a few years ago, we had a big extra part of the library built on the front. And it's a big splashy glass building and you can't really miss it if you're anywhere in the area at all and what's nice is they made a big open plaza in front of it and they plan to do some more over to the over on the north campus to match up so we want to be a presence and want to be part of what's going on everywhere and so that's a little bit of a challenge if you're out on your own separately but we've done everything we can to help that along the way so part of what we've done is we have our buildings, our building, and I've got a selection of uh, snapshots from the building there, but the one at the top left is actually from our Russell Library, which is our research and manuscripts special collections library, further into the South Campus, but it's very much part of what we are as well. Um, so lots of you know, traditional seating, nice comfortable bean bags, I'm really related to the big survey they did in the College of Surgeons about that uh, and their planning talking about it yesterday. But when I was looking at this slide just before I came up, I thought, what two images, I packed this in as much as I could, and what two stand out for me? And for me, the, 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 the little two on the bottom right-hand side, really important as well. So the bottom right-hand side one here is our website. And so a huge big part of what we do has to be how we reach out electronically and all our social media and all the rest of it as well. But up there, tucked into the little Starbucks logo, and to me, that also is a really big important part of how we get out there and people like to come to us and so on because you walk in our door you get a lovely smell of coffee and I think that's a really nice way to experience the library when you begin. So besides the building then what kind of services do we provide? Well all along the list on the right hand side there are the sort of things you'd expect us to be doing in all kinds of ways. Um, and I suppose what we have to think then is how to develop that further and um, what we're going to do in terms of uh, 
you know, building and expanding all the time. And so what I would say there really for that is it's really important to be available. So you can provide these services, but you have to be out there actually doing it with a nice big happy smile on your face. And Frank will follow up on how we did that in some ways for definite as well. But you very much develop your service, keep on top of them, but keep them developing more and more, but out there all the time, promoting them and involving them and get listening to what people tell you um, and see what else you can do. So Moving on from the whole idea of the services, what about the people who are providing them? So library staff, core to all of this, and this has just got obviously in another role, people really matter in, in, in a service and as part of obviously core to a community. So um, we, have, we have all our, our lots of our uh, roles in the library, they've been evolving all the time and I think what's very, very important is they must continue to develop and evolve. Okay, so what we've got is a we have to get out there. I've just got a warning to stop. I missed my two-minute deadline, so I'm going to rush along and just say that we've got lots of prompts to develop and get out there and do some more. Certainly, I like that little picture. It's a little cheery woman librarian, but actually, she's behind the desk. So get out. Get out there into and meet up with people. And this is where Frank will talk to next. She knows what we do. Hi, folks. As <coughs> Pauline mentioned there, we've got a brand-new library, reasonably new. And uh, one of the things uh, that we uh, are keen to do is to um, promote the library and promote our services. Um, one, we have a new strategic plan. And one of the goals is to strengthen and align our engagement with the campus and the wider community. And uh, the ways that we are doing that um, as a team of subject librarians is uh, we've uh, begun to sit on additional university uh, committees. We have engaged with the academic community in coffee mornings. We invite library reps into the um, college and uh, we meet them on an informal basis. They get to meet the public, uh, the subject librarians and the senior management team and any new initiatives that we have in the library, we're able to pass them on out to them. We're also, all the subject librarian team, are attached to events and exhibitions. Any event and exhibition that is on uh, in the library, there is a subject librarian attached to it. We recently had a publications festival from the Faculty of Arts and Theology, and the subject librarians uh, for both of those areas were heavily involved uh, in, uh, uh, with the uh, academic community. Uh, we have to advocate at all times uh, it is our role to advocate at all times for the library <coughs> and make sure <coughs> excuse me, that our message is getting across. So uh, that is why we uh, set up the coffee mornings, uh, bring the academics in to us, uh, the events and exhibitions as well. We have a beautiful new library, as Pauline was saying. We have a beautiful foyer that we are able to hold exhibitions and um, bring the community to us. Um, and we're physical library, it's great. We are all used to people coming in to us, no matter what libraries we are in. Um, but one of the things we have decided to do is uh, to set up a pop-up library as well, and to go out amongst our community, the campus community. Um, I've always liked the idea of pop-up shops. You're walking down the street and you see a pop-up shop appears out of the blue. They move with the current trends. They're here, they're gone. Um, they add to the community, they're always where the people are. Um, we had contact with the Students' Union. The Students' Union, we meet all of our students, first years get an orientation of the library when they come in, but we were getting feedback from students saying um, they would like to be able to put um, a face to a subject librarian, somebody that they can get in contact with. And we've had great um, contact with the Students' Union. Uh, they've been great collaborators of us, um, helping to do this as well. Um, so we decided to set up um, pop-up libraries and go out amongst uh, the students. Uh, the first one we did was in Science Week. We picked um, uh, an optimum time for it. Uh, there were a lot of promotional activities in the university for Science Week and we went out to the science block. Um, we, what did we do? We, uh, we created a banner, uh, an eye-catching banner that uh, people would see and would stop. We uh, had to get some inducements as well, um, some uh, pastries and uh, fruit as well to hand out to students. We had a um, competition 
who is your subject librarian with a book voucher of 50 euros as well uh, for students to stop. Um, we were surprised on a lot of occasions with students that came up, uh, how active they were users of the library. Um, but on the other side, um, they weren't aware of a lot of the electronic resources. So we had the subject librarian team out in the science block or the arts block, um, and we all had iPads, so we were able to walk up to students and say, are you familiar with subject librarian pages? Are you so familiar with such and such a database? We're in science, have you used Science Finder? Have you used Reaxis? Um, this is how you get onto them. And we were able to get a lot of feedback as well. We get postgraduates. So anybody who's a science uh, librarian will know on a lot of occasions uh, the students don't come to us. A lot of postgraduates would say, I don't use the library, but we can engage with them and say, how can we engage with you better? How would we promote ourselves to undergraduates? What could we do that is better? So these are some of the pictures of us uh, out um, with the um, pop-up library. Uh, we pop up in different places throughout the campus. Um, we don't advertise in advance where we're going to be, but when we are in a location, um, we're in contact with the Students Union, we have our Facebook, we have our Twitter, so that people know where we are. Um, we can promote um, all the wonderful resources that the library has. This picture of us here with uh, our list, and list online, and um, we've got great feedback um, from students and staff. Uh, where do we go from here? Uh, we started off with subject librarians, uh, just uh, introducing ourselves, who we are, but we've gone on to uh, do pop-ups uh, for the international students, um, or go out to specific faculties and just pop up for an hour and highlight a particular database um, or different resources that the library have. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, everybody, thanks. Um, lightning talk, and this is going to be a lightning talk, pretty quick. Um, this is going to be about how the library staff at IT Carlo engaged with a fairly remote, for our, in our, for our purposes, library and their users who we um, provide courses for. IT Carlo provides courses for the Defence Forces. Sue will tell you a bit more about that. Um, and it was done within the context of a um, national forum project. The National Forum for the Enhancement of Teaching and Learning put out a call in late November 2015 for expressions of interest and to obtain funding for a project called Digital Champions. This was uh, primarily aimed maybe at the academics, but um, we felt that within the context of information literacy being such an important topic and becoming far more a formal part of librarians' work in teaching it, and that in more recent times the whole thing of librarians being, you, being able to teach people to distinguish between fake news and real news is becoming a very hot topic. We felt we could bid for this. So we sat down at Carlo and we thought about how we were going, what we wanted to do, how we wanted to go about this, and which cohort of students we really wanted to work with. And very rapidly, we came to the conclusion that it was the Defence Forces. They are very much not a traditional academic cohort of students. Um, Sue will tell you more about this for very obvious reasons. They are very much distance learners. They are, could be anywhere. So, very rapidly, we felt that the way to go was to develop online tutorials for those students. Um, again, the Teaching and Learning, the Digital Champions um, project, one of the aims was to enable staff to develop their skills in using digital material and to interact with students using online material. So, in all criteria, it fitted their requirements and we felt it would allow us to engage very much more with the Defence Forces. Up until then there hadn't been a huge amount of contact with them. So um, off we went. Well, help on. Flying through the sun, I'm sorry about that. 
So what we did was to start preparing, um, getting going on preparing some um, digital online tutorials for the Defence Forces. Um, we contacted Sue, we talked to the Defence Forces, library staff, and this was the big thing. We were sociable with them. We were talking to them. We were having a lot of discussion with them. We were surveying the students. We were talking to the students. And with the support of our teaching and learning department, and particularly Damien Raftery, one of the um, business lecturers who is um, a bit of a guru on developing um, digital resources, he gave us, the library staff, a lot of help in developing our um, online resources that articulate using screencast-o-matic, which up until that point we hadn't really done. So we came up with a set of modules which are now available on our Blackboard VLE for the Defence Force students to use. Um, from our perspective, it was a very worthwhile thing to do, um, enhanced our skills, as I said, but it did allow us to interact with the Defence Forces. We got to talk to Sue and her staff, we got to talk to the students at in the Defence Forces, we got a much better idea of what they do, how they do it, what they need from us. So um, it was a very worthwhile exercise from our point of view. Um, Finally, as I say, it's on, it's on closed access at the moment. We're hoping to develop more generic versions that will be put out on open access for other members of our student community. But here's a few screenshots anyway, um, just to show you what we did. And with that, I'll hand over to Sue. No, I believe I'm on the clock, so nothing better than giving an army person a time on the clock. So five minutes and we'll be out off for a cup of tea. Okay, so I'll be giving you the who, the what, the where, the when and the why of all this. Um, so who I am, I'm Commandant Sue Ramswatham, I'm the Defence Forces Librarian. I'm located in the Military College in the Defence Forces Training Centre in the Curragh in County Kildare. It's an educational and research library that we are, and all military personnel will actually come through the military college at some part of the career. And they range from all ranks. We range from privates up to, the, uh, to colonels. And we also have international students that visit us. Um, we're there to provide a high quality library and information services, just like the rest of you. And we're there to support the teaching, learning, and research objectives of the Defence Forces. Uh, just a little bit of background, IT Carlo also, as with Minute University, IT Carlo and the Defence Forces have a memorandum of agreement between both parties in establishing a strategic partnership between both organisations to develop and implement strategic uh, shared strategies in teaching, in, advance, in advancing, say, leadership, management and education in research for all Defence Forces students. This collaboration of a partnership allows members of the Defence Forces through the career advancement training, not only to develop their military skills, but after developing their military skills, they also get a formal educational qualification. So just to tell you that Dr Mary, De Dr. Mary Delaney, the librarian down in Carlow, we met and we did informal meetings as Simon said, and what we came up with was our students, our NCOs, are on a level seven leadership management and defense studies in Carlo IT. And what we noticed was they were definitely getting their lectures, they were definitely coming and getting their orientation in the library. But when it, they were so involved in military activity that when it came to writing essays, for example, describe, explain, went to write their dissertations, they were coming to me absolutely in panic because they were so involved in the military aspect. And then when they got the time, it was at weekends, or it was at a time when the, the military part of it had eased off a little bit. So what we decided was, through informal interviews, um, through uh, observation, through focus groups, we focused on one group, the Level 7 group. And we, we looked at them, and we looked at the previous course, and we looked at the present course. There was over 80 students on each course. And what we came up with was this Digital Champions. So talking to Mary and Simon, they came up with a tailored plan that suited our needs. It looked at our user, and we're able to evaluate as we go along our user. 
So as time went along, Carlo launched down and went down to UCC and we all had our own formal launch then between IT Carlo and the Defence Forces in Defence Forces Training Library in October of last year. So basically, what do we, as you can see from it, as you saw from the previous slides, it's for us, it's, it's for the soldier, it's for the user. And they're able to you know, go onto a page, each page has the same feel and look, each page they can skip. So there's tutorials there. They didn't know how to cite, they didn't know how to reference, now not all of them, but some of them. So now they can go in and they can go to the part that they want. And that's the part that we like. And we're able to do it. We've got to remember, we have got, um, we have got um, a library that's not open 24-7. And when they want it, it's probably at 3 o'clock in the morning when they get a chance. Or it could be at the weekends. And you've got to remember, they're able now to log on remotely into Carlo IT and have this. So what did we get out of it as the Defence Forces? We got a better working relationship with Carlo IT. But above all, our users, uh, their needs were met. So at the end of the day, you can say that IT Carlo and the Defence Forces are marching well in an academic world. Thank you. <laughs>